The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. In the 15th year of Tiberius Caesar's reign, when Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea, Herod, tetrarch of Galilee, his brother Philip, tetrarch of the lands of Eturia and Trachonitis, Licinius, tetrarch of Abilene, during the pontificate of Annas and Caiaphas, the word of God came to John, son of Zechariah, in the wilderness. He went through the whole Jordan district, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins, as it is written in the book of the sayings of the prophet Isaiah. A voice cries in the wilderness, Prepare a way for the Lord, make his paths straight. Every valley will be filled in, every mountain and hill be laid low. Winding ways will be straightened, and rough roads made smooth, and all mankind shall see the salvation of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. And so through our readings here today, we have this opportunity to continue to reflect on our, on our faith journey. Uh, some very important aspects coming through our readings here today, all of this in preparing for the way of the Lord. And, and, and it, for, for myself, it evokes some, some wonderful memories, uh, talking about making the ways straight. When I was in Dominica, I was there at the cathedral, and one of our art stations was Loda, way up on the hills. And the road to it was very, very windy as it wove through the valleys there and the crevices. And, and I was saying to them that one time I was late. And so I had come so quickly that I'd actually straightened the road out. <laughs> but uh, it, it's true, when, uh, when I was down at Nsanje, and that was the first mission that I was at when I was in Malawi there. And I had been down, I'd been down a couple of times uh, during Advent the, uh, the, the, the uh, road was blocked off, we couldn't get across the river, and so we had to go down by train. And I had made, one, I had made two trips prior to blocking the road, and, and then after that just on the train. And then the beginning of, of January, I actually had to go up to town and down and around across on the other bridge and then come 50 miles down to get to Bangula, to get from Bangula to Nsanje. It was 36 miles. And remember, I'm not sure this is the first time that I've ever didn't done this by myself, and so I'm anxious, I'm going as quickly as I possibly can. As I'm weaving through the villages with the chickens and the goats on the road and things like that, the sand, the river crossings, um, you'd have to slow down, they'd be washed out a little bit, you have to slow down. I'm going as quickly as I can, and it took two and a half hours, 36 miles. So you can imagine how rough the road was and everything. Later on, the life president was supposed to come, uh, he never did, but he was supposed to come, and they prepared a new road for him, and, and wherever there was a river crossing, they actually filled it in. I mean, the first rain would take it away, but they filled it in. And, and Father Hugh Clikers, whom I was with, uh, he had come back on this new road. And uh, he, he'd actually made it in 36 minutes. I could never go that quickly, but I tried, but I didn't make it that quickly. Anyhow, it just, it, it evokes some memories. And, 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 and the thing is, and the sad thing is too, of course, eh, all this preparation that were made for this life president and he never showed up, you know. And for ourselves, we are so much more blessed because the preparations that we make, our God is going to show up. Right? He never fails. Now, he, does, he answers that sometimes in ways that we don't expect. And this is where, as we look at our readings, I think we can see some of the things that we're challenged to do and called to do. Um, 
in our second reading from St. Paul's letter to the Philippians there, it makes mention about how he prays for them, prays with joy for their commitment, their efforts, and continues to pray for them. How reassuring it was for them, and how reassuring and a reminder to all of us how we too are called to pray for each other, to continue to pray. And, and, and if we look at our Eucharistic uh, prayers, we see that, of course, eh? Uh, when we come, and it makes mention, we pray for the Pope, we pray for the Bishop, we, we pray for each other, you know. And, and uh, then we pray for our departed. And, and if there's a pause, and sometimes time constraints, whatever, uh, we, we, we have to pay attention. But sometimes we pause. And that's the time when we are invited to reflect and to think about who it is that we're particularly praying for, somebody in a family who is sickly, lost a job, whatever. Uh, when we pray for our departed, you know, members of our family. Like, I mean, uh, pretty well every Mass, I, I remember my parents, I officiated at their, at, their, at their funerals, you see. So remembering mom and dad. You know, and this is, this is what we're invited to do, of course. Eh? And certainly, as we lift our prayers up, of course, God responding to them. And sometimes, sometimes we may think that, you know, that, that looking towards heaven. And, and in our first reading from the Old Testament, from the prophet Baruch, I think he gives us another dimension. And certainly, that's what we do. Uh, certainly, that was the whole uh, Jewish mentality, get up onto the heights, the highest point, up onto the hills, the mountain top, the ridge top, whatever, because you were closer to heaven and to the kingdom of God. And so eyes cast to the sky. But here in our, in our first reading here, it says, no, don't, don't keep your eyes cast on the sky. Begin to look to the east, look around you. And, and what was happening, and what had happened, of course, was that the, the, the Babylonians had come in and, and taken, uh, besieged Jerusalem, and captured the people. Those who were able-bodied, they had taken away as slaves, and they'd left the rest there. Right? You know, I mean, the city is destroyed, and people who were of no real value or importance in, in, their, in, 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 in the commerce at that time, would have been left behind. So very, very badly wounded, very handicapped people, uh, people who would be uh, blind or uh, of, of, of no value, you see, would be left behind. And, and uh, if they really wanted to burden the survivors, even as weak as they might be, they would leave all of the injured for them to be taken care of as well, making and just adding to the struggles just to exist, you see. And so that challenge to look out, to not to, to be looking only to the sky, but to look out around. And this is where, as I was reflecting upon that, uh, I had an incident that happened this, this week. I was called down to the hospital to anoint as somebody that was dying. And, and we, we were offering prayers as, as this person was in, in, in dire situation. We're offering prayers, and, and just before we, we were doing that, one of the nurses came out of the intensive care unit, crying. And, uh, you know, I mean, she was, she was distraught. It was very, very obvious. She encouraged to gather together to pray, even though we couldn't go in. But God hears our prayers, so we were praying. Then we were moved out, and the family, some of the family gathered together. And again, just the feelings, um, the, 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 the sorrow, the sympathy, the empathy. And uh, later on, I was able to go in and conditionally anoint the person uh, the condition was if they were alive. Uh, you know, I mean, it's, it's in God's hands. Eh? The medical team had, had done the best that they could. And uh, then we came out. And, and I was asking this, this nurse, aide, whatever, 
If she was family, she wasn't. She wasn't. But this was a sister. This was a sister who needed help, was in dire situations, was dying. And she was empathetic. She was saddened by it. She was very, very distraught. And, and, and that's where I think it's, it behooves us to reflect upon that and to think about those people who, who assist and oftentimes do it without, without any fanfare, but who reach out in great care and compassion. I think of teachers who go above and beyond the call of duty, uh, expending their own resources, time, great skills, uh, you know, and, and, and sometimes don't get credit. I think particularly and especially of, of the nurses and doctors, uh, I have a very, very good friend who was a nurse. And uh, in, in fact, she was in such a terrible accident that they didn't think she was going to live. Uh, but she did, and continued to nurse, to care for the elderly. And eventually, and I knew this family for over 40 years, Eventually, she was caring for her own husband, who she had to put into the care facility, and uh, ended up feeding him. I was there one time, and I learned a little trick. Um, she, she took the medication, which she wasn't, didn't particularly like, and she put it into the, into the sauce or the uh, dessert, and mixed it in with the dessert, and he ate it very well. <laughs> So, any in the, in the in the caring ministry, of course, probably knows that. Uh, with me, it was an insight. But the way that that she cared for her husband, and I just ha have have thought back and looked back upon that, and and uh, you know, the unsung heroes, eh? and how it really behooves ourselves to be uh, so very very thankful for their service. I think of the lady who cared for my dad as he was in, in the last months of his life. Uh, and everybody knew the outcome. She knew the outcome. She knew what was going to happen. He had terminal cancer. And yet she was so cheerful and so upbeat. I've always admired that and, and, and continued to pray for her. Life was not easy for her, but she was always very, very upbeat. And, and, and I think this is, where, this is where our readings here today just encourage us to, sure, we continue to give glory and honor and praise to God. We continue to look heavenward. This is our journey. This is our faith. This is what we are working towards. But let's continue to look outside and around as well. The opportunities that we have to reveal God's love working in and through us, right? Not just heavenward. Uh, and and don't, don't misunderstand me. I'm not minimizing the importance and the time in prayer. That's also very, very important. Giving us guidance and direction. Strengthening us. Right? Giving us purpose. Um, but also looking around. And, and just recognizing, recognizing and realizing the, the great services and sacrifices that some of our brothers and sisters are making. And maybe that we too are challenged to make. And certainly in the 25th chapter of St. Matthew's Gospel, it speaks about the end of time and you know, the, 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 the judgment that is going to come. And the, the separation, sheep from goats. And, and enter into the kingdom prepared. I was hungry and you gave me to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me to drink. And the surprise, when did we do that? Whenever you did it to the least of my brothers, you did it to me. And then the condemnation, when you did not do it, you did not do it to me. And so this whole challenge, of course, is to recognize, I mean, here, of course, we realize through the word of God and through the sacrament, Christ present here, the very core of our belief, the very center of all the sacraments, of course, the Eucharist, the very body and blood, soul and divinity of Christ under the appearances of bread and wine. I mean, that, that teaching, uh, I mean, Christ present here, of course, eh? but Christ also present out there. 
Christ present in our brothers and sisters, we being Christ to them. And so we can see then the, the whole light ceremony here during Advent getting brighter and brighter as we get closer and closer to this great feast, historic feast, Christ and taking on our human nature, showing us the importance of who we are and what we are, leading us to God our Father. And how can we continue then to allow that light of Christ to shine brighter and brighter? How can we continue to be enlightened and guided by that light? And so today we gather together realizing that we're preparing each and every day to meet the Lord, to be the Lord, and how we need his grace and strength to do that. Amen.